Hey, this is Stephen Platinum, your friend in wrestling with Platinum against AEW Dark Elevation. Uh, this is episode 38, I believe. It took place November 22nd, 2021, for posterity's sake. Now, people have given me feedback, which is absolutely wonderful. And one of the feedback things was, um, we like it when you tell us how many appearances that people have made specifically and uh, go into a little more detail about stuff like that. In addition to my analysis of what I think this means in terms of uh, AEW and my three check grading system and explaining that. So cool. I'm happy to do it. I think I found a great way to sort of take notes and that kind of thing. So let's get into it, right? So we got Justin Roberts as the ring announcer. Your commentary team is pretty huge, uh, even for Dark Elevation. It's Shivani, Excalibur, Eddie Kingston, Paul White, and Mark Henry at different points. Holy moly. Uh, we got Anna Jay and Tay Conti, a team that we're keeping together, apparently, which I think is wonderful, um, against Willow Nightingale, who's making her, I believe, fifth appearance, and Erica Lee, who um, is brand new, has never been in AEW to the best of my knowledge. Um, it is a good, solid match where they give up some offense uh, to the people who are going to obviously lose. Um, Conti is the bigger star, hits that hammerlock DDT, picks up the wind. If we grade these enhancement matches on a three-check system, one check for the proper entity being put over, which happened. And do they look strong in the process? That's a second check mark. And then the people who are losing, do they do a good job in defeat and or get a disproportionately high amount of offense? And the answer is honestly yes to both of those. So three check marks and we are off and running. Our second match, Tony Nice, who is new but clearly going to get the pizzy pizzy push because he's 1-0, against Logan LaRue, who I believe is new to AEW, but even I'm familiar with him. So I expect this to be a very competitive matchup such as it is. It's is. I'm still going to call it an enhancement match, but I imagine LaRue is going to get a lot in there. And sure enough, it happened. It's really cool. Tony Nice, what's his finisher? Uh, the running Nice. Uh, Tony Nice so far hasn't shown anything like sort of out of the ordinary, but yet another good hand in a league that has many. So I'm curious to see where they go with him. But uh, this is a squash match if you want to be a jerk about it. Um, Tony Nice looks good. That's check mark. Um, that's a second check mark because he gets put over in definitive fashion and Logan does a great job and gets a disproportionately high amount of offense. That's three check marks. Next, we've got um, a tag match, Ricky Starks and Will Hobbs with Hook against Lucas Chase and Irvin Legend. Irvin Legend is making his first appearance with AEW, a lot of first timers, and Lucas Chase has had one. So yeah, it's what you would expect. It's a lot of Will Hobbs destroying them. But Starks getting the pin. So Starks, um, you know, he had that, that that really serious neck injury, but apparently he's back after all of that. There's a lot of this was Starks sort of getting in there and sort of getting warmed up and and that kind of thing. But he definitely took spots and all of that stuff. So it's great to see Ricky Starks back doing his thing. This is obviously a squash match. So yes, uh, Team Taz is put over definitively and they win definitively and uh, the guys who are losing looked good in defeat so three check marks fourth match another one of these whole lot of women in a match matches um, they're trying to find uses for all these 25 women they have under contract and I ain't mad about it fourth match is Statlander Layla Hirsch who we haven't seen in a long time Ryo Mizunami against the bunny Penelope Ford and Emi Sakura uh, this is most definitely a competitive match so we grade these on a slightly different system, but it's still three check marks. Do both sides look good? Absolutely. Um, does one team get put over definitively? Yes. They don't do crappy finishes in this league. So it's Statlander, who's obviously uh, the biggest star right now, uh, winning with the Big Bang Theory. And um, is something advanced? Yeah, I think we're going to see more of these uh, women's six-mans and more and more and more. So... Three check marks. Going into the fifth match, um, Frankie Kazarian, who's looking to get back on the winning track after honestly losing a couple matches on AEW Dark and Dark Elevation that I was not expecting him to lose. So that's interesting. But he's taking on Joe Keys, who is 0-3 in AEW. So I'm expecting this to be a very typical, which is not to say bad, 
uh, typical in a good way because Kazarian shines in these kind of matches where he's able to lead somebody and make them look good, but then ultimately get his thing over. And that most certainly happens here. Three check marks. Good job. Crossface chicken wing put over. Six match. Dark Order. In this case, an incarnation against Alex Reynolds, John Silver, and Preston Vance. By the way, this incarnation of the Dark Order, this particular six-person team, is 4-0. Hmm, interesting, right? Against Baron Black, who's wrestling his 42nd match for AEW. Good for him. And uh, Duke Davis and Gannon Jones. Duke Davis making his fourth appearance. And uh, Gannon Jones, I believe, is a first-timer. Um Typical Dark Order multi-person match. There's a lot for the guys to have to remember and do and a complicated series of things near the end. It all goes off um, without much of a hitch. And Vance makes uh, Baron Black tap out to the full Nelson lock. Good stuff. Um, three check marks in an obvious squash. But the guys do a good job of keeping up, especially Baron Black, who does really great work. That's why they continue to use him. Seventh match, Riho against Trisha Dora. Trisha Dora! This is the match I was looking forward to the most. It's great to see Trisha Dora, who I think of very, very highly of, and has a nice back and forth with Riho for quite some time. Riho eventually does connect with that double flying foot stomp. But the, even the commentators really put over Trisha Dora as something special. While I would not call this a competitive match, I would call it a match that's easily three check marks. And I'm sure we're going to see more Trisha Dora in AEW. Really makes me happy. And then finally, our eighth match. Um, so they go, went from six matches to eight, which is not bad. The, the show wasn't overly long or anything like that. And we had Wheeler, Utah against Serpentico. I will generously call this competitive, even though it's clear that Wheeler, Utah is going to win. And win he does. But Serpentico um, always does a great job in these kind of matches. It's very competitive. Both sides look good. That's check mark. Um, Wheeler Utah wins definitively with the big boot. That's a second check mark. Is something advanced? Who knows? Maybe we'll see. Uh, Best France against um, Chaos Project. In any case, this has been Stephen Platinum. Thanks for listening. Appreciate you.